see you God and I want to know you more I want to feel the power of your spirit Lord yes I want to see you God and I want to know you more I want to feel the power of your spirit Lord the dead will rise and the lame will leave the blind will see and the mute will speak the sick are healed if they believe it by the power of your Holy Spirit
power that God has for you to those who believe oh, I love that song who likes Disney movies come on candy do you know this four there's four Disney movies that I know of you could probably tell me otherwise if there's more there's four Disney movies Maleficent. I said it right, didn't I? Malef Maleficent. Whatever. The original Sleeping Beauty. Enchanted. And everybody's favorite, Frozen. And all four of them talk about the most powerful thing on earth. No. Come on. No. No. True love's kiss, right? True love's kiss, the most powerful thing in the world. <laughs> That's good garbage to feed our kids. It's just not true. It's not the most powerful thing in the world. It's close though. Love. That's getting pretty close, right? I believe that a proper response to the gospel has to come from a proper comprehension of God's love for you. And I don't know if anyone in this room can comprehend completely God's love for them. I'm a weak man and I can't possibly tell you about it. But it's unending. It's not based on your performance or your behavior. So these, are com these are things for us, it's tough to even comprehend, isn't it? Because that's not the way we are. Why do we stay married most often if he or she does as we desire? If not, you hear it all the time, I'm not in love with you anymore. That's not God's love. I can't possibly describe that to you. Like I said, I can't do another program. I can't give you five easy steps to make this work. That God has to give you the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. And there's a prayer I want to pray for you right now, but I need you to do this. I need you to, seriously, all of you to close your eyes. And I want you to do this. I want you to visualize in your own way. Let the Spirit guide you. Because if we took pen and paper, it would look different for everybody. But I want you to close your eyes and I want you to visualize as I pray for you. Just imagine what this looks like. Lord, I pray that from your glorious unlimited resources that you would empower these precious people here with inner strength through your spirit and may they in the power of that spirit understand as all God's people should he wants you to understand this how wide how long how high and how deep 
your love is for them. How wide, how long, how high, and how deep a Father's love is for you. See, God's not an experience necessarily, like you're not searching for a buzz. But you see, he said he wants all, pe all God's people should know this. Every one of you should understand how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is for you. That's a game changer. ask you to do this in Jesus name he is jealous for me loves like a hurricane I Oh, you are and how great you 
you're loved. anybody out there who's not here tonight that needs to know that would you bring them here please like I said I don't think that uh, experience is everything our faith is not based you know purely an experiential faith there's a lot of truth involved in our faith but I believe that God wants to give you experiences much like that one that you would know how much he loves you he wants you to know he even said it that all good God's people should know how much he loves and we all experience God's love in different ways don't we I've had some talks lately about that here at the church I'll share a little bit about how I experience God's love who's ever had a little baby and, and daddies can say that too little babies obviously the Dijakamas are going to lift their hands <laughs> okay so did you ever have you ever wondered when you're like like when he was like just a little itty bitty little thing like less than one or, or Jameson ja I mean Lucas they, they love you like they just you know you know what I'm saying like that in our relationships as adults, you like you have to earn my affections. Do you understand that? That's the way it is. Let's be honest. If you're good to me, I'll be good to you. But as wretched as you can be, you come home and your little baby, like Jameson, runs right up. Daddy! <laughs> I am not his daddy. That's his daddy. But like, why, why? Let me ask you a question. Who would say that Vernon's probably made some mistakes in his life? Fair to say, right? Why does that little baby love him so much? Why? See, I, I think that, I personally think that when he loves him, that that's Almighty God saying, Vernon, I love you. Like he hasn't, that little kid, I'm not insulting him, but he, don't take this wrong. He's stupid. Honestly, right? Is he a brain surgeon? Would you, when, if you went to go get a sur uh, an operation and then he came in as your doctor, would you feel good about it? Okay, so he's just this like walking empty hard drive, right? But why does he love, why does he love them so much? Because it's wired into him, right? It's God. I feel that way about my kids when they just love me, the little babies. You know what I mean? It's just amazing. I haven't earned it yet, but yet they love me anyway. So that's how I experience God's love. And then the other time is when we're in here and the beautiful people that bless us every single week, whoever else is here, when they sing, I know we're singing to Jesus, right? We're singing to Jesus. You're singing to Jesus. They're singing to Jesus. But for some reason, when I'm in here and they're singing, I just feel like God's singing to me. You know? This is going to sound crazy. Please don't take this wrong. Please don't take this wrong. When they're singing, I feel like God's making love to me. Not in a sick way, but he's romancing me. He's loving on me. I'm not making this up. <laughs> There's a verse in a, in a book of the Bible that many of us probably never read. Zephaniah 317. Can you put it up there? King 
James, so bear with me. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee. He's here. He's mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. That's how I experience God's love for me. When you guys sing, when God uses your throat and your throat and your throat to sing to me, that's when I experience God's love. Close your eyes a second. Lord, you, uh, just a moment ago, you blessed us. You blessed us with truth, which is how wide, how long, how high, and how deep your love is for us. And you want us to understand it. But as Paul said in Ephesians 3, 19, that your love is way too great for us to understand. But Paul prayed for this, and I want to pray for, I, Father, I want to pray this for these beautiful people. That you'd give them experiences. You'd help them to experience, not just to understand in their brain, but to experience your love for them. That they would experience the love of Christ. Not just know it. They'd be washed. It would wash over them like a tidal wave. Whether it be in the eyes or the embrace of their little child. Or whether it's like Sandra shared and she had her first little squirrel that she found and she saw his little skin. It was, it was the size of like an acorn and that you could see through its skin and its heart was beating. And all of a sudden you brought to her attention how much you care for the sparrows, i.e. squirrels too. How much more do you care for us? It's when she saw the beating heart of a baby squirrel that she realized and experienced your love for her. Please give us experiences of your love for us. In Jesus' name. I stand before you now in the greatness of your now I have heard of the majesty and wonder of you King of heaven in humility I bow as your love wave after wave crashes over me crashes over me as you are for us you are not against us champion of heaven you made a way for all to answer
call me out beyond the shore It's you ways you make me brave You make me brave No fear can hinder now The love is made away And you make me brave is over me as you are for us you are not against us champion of heaven you made a way for all to enter your love with wave after wave it crashes over me crashes over me is you are for us you are not against us champion of heaven you made a way for all to enter in Appreciate your all's patience. This is important work. I see a lot of remember I said that my Christmas list it's birthed out of the air that I breathe here and the and the struggle. I think someone came up with that expression, the struggle is real. I think they were one of our church family members. I see a lot of hot and cold. I see a lot of on and off again. I see a lot of attending and then disappearing. I see a lot of great generosity in the stories that people tell when they gave and what the Lord did in response to it. And then they stop. We'll just call it circumstantial flip-flopping. <laughs> it's to stop. <laughs> I don't know anyone else, any other way to say it. But again, it's the Lord. It's the Lord that gives us the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. No amount of effort. You can't say, you know what, honey, from now on we're never blowing up church ever again. And like that's going to stick because it won't. The Lord has to give you the desire and the power to stick with him. Let me pray for you. Father God, I thank you um, again for all that you're doing in here tonight. I thank you for the freedom to be, to be uh, different I thank you for this awesome family of believers who are flawed but faithful. I thank you for their friendship. I thank you for giving me the freedom to do what very few preachers can do, and that is to share what is on my heart with freedom. I thank you for the willingness of the people to sit under truth receive it 
Lord, there's so much on and off, so much hot and cold, so much I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, and then I'm gone, and I can't find them. Would you go after your lost sheep, Lord? Would you go after all those that are not amongst us tonight? And let them know how much you love them. And Lord, would you change this pattern of flip-flopping? Would, would, you, would you help us not to respond to circumstance so quickly? so irrationally? Would you change the pattern in these people by strengthening them with your glorious power so that they'll have all the endurance and the patience that they need? Those who persevere to the very end will receive the rich, glorious inheritance. Help us right here us, me, to be that kind of person that's not swayed by every circumstance, but perseveres. Give me the strength, Lord Jesus, to give me the strength to, to persevere. Please. You can look up if you want. Um, last time I preached, before Kyle did, I preached in Romans 12. And I preached about the things I talked about was this false idea that as soon as God tells me exactly what I'm supposed to do in his ministry, then I'll go in. And then I'll be a hundred percenter. That's wrong. See, in Romans 12, he says, give your bodies as a living sacrifice. He says, go all in right now. Stop doing what everyone else does. Seek out my truth and then I will reveal my specific will for you which is good and perfect and pleasing. We all want that, right? You want that. God gives us the desire and the power to do what pleases him. God gives us the desire and the power to go all in in the first place. See, he wants to declare his will for your life. But you can't just say, okay, God, do it. See, some things he's already pre-described. I want to do this, but you've got to do this first, and then I'll do it. So let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you would give each and every person here the desire and the power to say yes to your call to go all in on you right now. That all the things that hold them back from fully committing their life to you, that it would be gone in Jesus' name. That they would go all in. That they would surrender their life. That they would daily pick up their cross. That they would go all in on serving and loving and obeying you. Open the book. Read the book. Do what it says to trust you and go all in right now. And Lord, I pray that right now that when they do this, I'm just reminding you of your, of your word, Lord. Not that you need to hear it, but we do. You said in the book of Colossians that that you want to declare your will to your people. And what's holding us back, Lord, from you declaring your will for us individually, man, woman, and child, right here, is we have failed you. We have not gone all in and fully committed our lives to you. And I pray, Lord, right now in the strength and the power and the authority of Jesus Christ's name that you'd give each and every one of us the desire and the power to follow you and go all in right now. In Jesus' name. Now, I'm almost done. Thank you for letting me do this. If you're, if you're tired of me talking, it's because you needed to be here. Paul transitions. Because this is all about you. What about me? See, in the book of Colossians in chapter 4, 
he says something different. He said, pray for us too. See, Paul, Paul tough gig. A lot, I know a lot of you probably think that I just sit around and study the Bible all day. That's all that I do. And I get that. That's fine. And eat. <laughs> but it's a tough gig dealing with everyone's stuff and expectations upon me of what they think I'm supposed to do. Right? And I also get bitter because of it. I just shared that with you, right? And he says here in, a, in Colossians 4, 3 and 4, he says, pray for us too. Two things. Pray that God will give us opportunities. It was us because he had his buddies with him. They were evangelizing and planting churches and all that, okay? It was him and his buddies. I got buddies too. People that lead here. People that get the phone calls like Dan and Kyle. Kelly preaches here too. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna group him in there too. I want you to pray for him. They put an offer in on a house tonight. You can pray for him. But it says to pray that God would give us opportunities to speak of Christ with people. And the second thing he prayed, asked for prayer for was that when we're given those opportunities, that we would speak clearly. So it would be effective. So it would get somewhere. So I'm shameless, and I'm going to ask for the next two minutes. I'm going to stand here just like I asked you. I'm going to put my head up. And I'm going to ask that you would pray that for me. I need prayer too. I want, I would, I want you to pray and ask God to give me opportunities to share Christ with people. And that I would speak clearly and effectively and powerfully, led by the Spirit of God, so the kingdom would advance. And while you're at it, pray that it would help me with my frustration and bitterness that I might serve with joy. Take a few minutes, please. but I would like two men to come forward please to pass out communion before we would you mind doing that Jim and you can actually keep playing but pass it out now please and then I'm going to cover this last thing with you take a moment before we take communion and continue to pray for those of us that are here at the church that lead in other ways. Um, I want to ask that you pray for my wife. I'd ask you to pray for our band. I ask you to pray for the men who faithfully come on Tuesdays to lead the men's group. Patience, endurance, faithfulness, courage, boldness. So as the last few people get, 
the communion elements. We're going to take it together. I'm going to leave you with this. This is the last thing. And we'll kind of wrap this night up. Sharing the prayers of Paul. I'd like the transition to the prayer of Jesus Christ. So we need to listen up. You don't need to look at me, but you need to listen. And this is something that I have been absolutely passionate about since day one when I accepted Christ. The division and the dissension and the church splits and the denominations and all these different brands and tribes and teams and it just, I don't even understand it. I heard of a church a couple years ago up in Leesburg that split into two. I ran into someone at the Christmas tree farm the other day. I said, where are you leading worship now? And he said, I'm leading worship at, name and named it, in Ocala. I said, mm, that sounds like the one up in Leesburg. He said, yeah, we split off that one. I was like, oh. so we split and then we split. Before we get to Jesus' prayer, in John 10, 17, I think it is, Jesus said I, that, that, that there should be one flock with one shepherd. We had a discussion today at our house about the Presbyterian, the Baptist, one's Reformed theology, one's, you know, classic, normal Christian orthodoxy, one's Reform, you know, one's predestined, one's not. Does anyone think that Presbyterians aren't going to be in heaven? Does anyone think that Baptists aren't? I mean, what, what, what's the, what is that? I never understood this. So this is what it's John 17. And then we'll take communion together as one flock with one shepherd. And I'm not him. John 17, Jesus Christ prayed to his Father. And he said, Father, by the power of your name, close your eyes and just listen, listen. Because this, this is Jesus praying over you, because it was for all the disciples that would come. That's us, me, you, everyone here. Father, by the power of your name, protect these so they will be united just as we are. Now, I, I don't even understand how united the Son and the Father are. Like, that's beyond my comprehension. But that's his desire for us. He goes on and he, he says, Father, my prayer is that all Christians would be one just as you and I are one. And may they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me. And then one other thing, and I'll tell you what it is in a moment, but before I get there, in their perfect unity, then the world will know that this Jesus that was just, quote unquote, a man, that he wasn't. But the world doesn't see him because we don't have perfect unity. We need perfect unity. We need to stop squabbling. We need to stop taking teams. We need to stop the us against them mentality. We need to embrace the Episcopal. Embrace the Presbyterian. Embrace the Pentecostal. Embrace the Baptist. Embrace them, brothers and sisters in Christ. And when the world will see us love one another, then they'll see the real deity of Jesus Christ. In this perfect unity that they will, that the world will know that you sent me and, this is crazy, and that you, Father, love them as much as you love me. Everyone out there is looking for love. And they can't find it. 
because we're not unified. In our perfect union, in our perfect unity, the world will know that they are loved just as much as the Father loves Jesus, His Son. He does love you as much as He loves Jesus. And the power of the Spirit comprehend that. So on the cross, He did two things. He reconciled himself and us and he reconciled us to each other that the walls of hostility would be broken down forever this is the love of Jesus this is powerful love he loves you as much as he loves his son reconciled to God and reconciled to one another on the cross at Calvary. Let's take this bread to remember the broken body of Christ that accomplishes this. And let's take the drink to remember Jesus' blood that was poured out for the forgiveness of your sin. The kind of love that he has for his son is what he has for you. That's the kind of love that transforms a life. That's the kind of love that transforms a church. That's the kind of love that transforms the golden triangle. And that's the kind of love that transforms the world. That's how much he loves you. And that's how much he loves those people that aren't here tonight. Comprehend that love and share that love I pray now, Lord, that you would help all these wishes on my Christmas lifts to come true. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to hear our prayers tonight and respond. Let this Christmas be the most glorious, wonderful Christmas we've ever had because you really work mightily in our lives. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for being with us here. Help us now to respond to you in this last song, to respond to you well, recognizing and realizing and understanding just how much you love us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.
thirst and hunger here to drink up glory and wonder here to cry out come and fill this place this place come and fill this place this place come and fill this place this place Thank you for what you've done tonight, Lord. We pray that the words that Moses has planted on our hearts would just you would just water them all week, Lord Jesus. And we would just grow more in you, Lord. And look back in Ephesians, Lord, and look back in, at Paul's prayers and say them about ourselves and proclaim it in your name, Lord, that, that we are what your word says we are, Lord. Love you, Jesus.